It is very common for an American to imagine a Frenchman on his way home from work grabbing a baguette and carrying it under his arm for dinner all the way home. But what most Americans don't know is that there is only one true king of bread in Europe, and it is not France. outside of Germany imagines German food, they often will think of brats, Wiener schnitzel, beer, but what they don't realize is that there's nothing more German than bread. In the US, when we think of bread, we pretty much think of white or wheat in a rectangular shape, all sliced up in a bag. But here in Germany, there's so much more surrounding bread. They even have a word specifically devoted to this called Brotkultur. We have traveled all the way to the south of Germany on the border of Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg to Ulm. And Ulm is a very special place. It is the home of Albert Einstein, home of the world's tallest church, and also to the Museum of Bread. So we've come here basically just for this, but we also did a whole video on all that other stuff I just mentioned last week. So be sure to check that video out. But before we start this video also, we need to kind of explain what is Brotkultur. So Brot is the word for bread in German and Kultur is the word for culture in German. So of course you have bread culture. And it is so important here that they devote an entire museum to it here in Ulm, but also UNESCO, who does the World Heritage Sites all over the world, and we know those famous sites so well, they also have an intangible cultural heritage list that they added German bread culture to in 2015. And they actually said it like this, I'm gonna read you this quote, but bread culture in Germany is the appreciation of the cultural asset bread has always been of outstanding importance in the family home environment. Be it the family breakfast together, the evening meal, or the snack between, the shared enjoyment of bread was and is not only eponymous for social gatherings, but also as a high priority in the social exchange of families and groups. So because bread culture is so important, we're gonna go check out this museum here and learn more about bread in Germany. checking out that museum, we really wouldn't recommend you checking it out so much if you really wanted to learn about bread. We've learned a lot more online in our own research, but if you're looking for art, it's kind of a cool museum. Here in Germany, there are thousands of different types of bread. In fact, the German Institute of Bread, yes, that's a thing, says that there are over 3,200 officially recognized types of bread here in Germany. That's a lot of bread. So how did that come to be here in Germany? So from what we've found in our research, Germany used to be made up of many different tribes and factions, and there are lots of different climates all across Germany. So each of these different tribes develop different recipes for bread, depending on their climate. So for example, in the north, there's a lot less sunshine than in the south. And so in the north, they weren't able to sustain wheat production as well as the south. So they used different ingredients and different grains, such as rye and spelt but in the South where they could sustain wheat more, wheat is a really important ingredient in their different breads. Today, bread is also very ingrained in the German vocabulary. You'll hear the word Abendbrot, which translates to evening bread, which is just a light meal that is often eaten around the family dinner table, with bread being the centerpiece, with cheese and deli meat surrounding it, or pickles, or a light soup. And this will often be found in the north or central parts of Germany. In the south, you can also hear the term Brotzeit, which means bread time. And this is just a mid-morning or afternoon snack, which of course centers around bread. And then there's also my favorite, which is Brotverb, which means gaining one's bread, or as American millennials love to say, getting that bread. Let's get this bread. 
Whenever I was in college, I got to do a study abroad program here in Germany and I had the opportunity to live with a German family. Every single morning I would come down for breakfast, I remember seeing baskets of Brötchen or Brot or different sliced breads. And I had all these different selections that were magnificent every single morning. And our understanding is that's pretty common for a lot of Germans, especially on like Saturday morning breakfasts. So after seeing how much bread Germans eat and it's integral to all their snack times and lunch times and dinner times, it's interesting to see how much bread the average German eats versus the average American eats. The average American will only eat about 24 kilos of bread per year versus the German that I have seen some varying statistics, but on the low end, I've seen the average German will eat about 53 kilos of bread a year and on the high end, up to 87 kilos of bread a year, which honestly I can believe because just walking around the cities, you see tons of people munching on delicious bread snacks at all hours. Maybe it'll be a pretzel, some cheese bread, or a bratwurst in some kind of bruchin, but there's a lot of bread going on here. It is super simple and cheap to reach that 87 kilos of bread per year because bakeries are all over the place. We have about three within walking distance of where we live, so we go there all the time. And bakeries are a staple in not only big cities, but even small little villages will always have a bakery. The different things at bakeries are also usually pretty cheap. Different breads and pastries are usually about a couple euros or less. Also to open your own bakery here in Germany, you have to have the title of master baker. So you know that going into a bakery, it's going to be really good. Like we mentioned before, in the United States, bread normally only comes in two varieties, white or wheat. You'll find them in plastic bags on the shelves in supermarkets. The crust is soft, and we generally only use them for making sandwiches like peanut butter and jellies. You can find that type of bread here in Germany as well, but they're often adorned with American flags all over them, kind of suggesting, why the heck are you buying me? You're in Germany, we have better breads than this. And it is so true. The breads in Germany are really, really good and are so different. It's kind of hard to really pin down what is German bread for us because there is so many different varieties. But generally what we can tell is the crusts on the outside are going to be hard. And in the north we have read that the breads tend to be a little bit denser and heavier. And it's supposed to help sustain people in those less sunny climates. And we've done no scientific research into this, but my sister who is gluten intolerant and really hasn't eaten any bread for the last 10 years because of health issues that are caused by the gluten inside of it. She came and visited us a few months ago and she ate all the bread and all the pasta she wanted with no issues while she was here in Europe. So there's something different about it here too. And yes, this is a croissant and this is a French baguette. France is also very proud of their bread making, but these are also major staples here in German bakeries as well. So we hope that you enjoyed getting to see something that is very integral to German culture and German food, and that is bread and something that we are very passionate about. I can guarantee you guys that all of this bread will be eaten and we will share it with others, so don't think we're just gonna waste it all, because we love this stuff. It's one of our favorite parts of being in Germany. If you like this video, please hit that like button and also subscribe, because we would love to show you more of Germany, and we would love to have you continue traveling with us. Cheers. Grabbing a baguette from the shop and carrying it under his arm. Arm. <laughs> okay, action. I begin to imagine a Frenchman on his way home from work grabbing a baguette on his way home from work. <laughs> <laughs> it is a UNESCO in tan... Dang it. Keep it, keep it rolling, keep it rolling. Okay, but also UNESCO has listed on their intangible cultural historical list. Dang it. Intangible cultural heritage, yes. 